Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. With Skillshare, you can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare is great, especially right now, because it's an affordable way to improve yourself. Whether you've got a creative project you want to get better for, or you just want to work in your productivity or your motivation or whatever else, Skillshare probably has a class for you. The great thing about Skillshare classes is that they're designed so you can take them at your own pace. They're often collaborative so you can connect with fellow professionals or others in your field. And before you even take a class, you can get a full look at the type of projects you might be doing and you can read reviews by real people who have taken the course. And personally, I'm interested in the simple productivity class, how to accomplish more with less. Because I run two YouTube channels, I'm not very productive, but I've got very little time. So there's a lot more I could get out of the time that I am working. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, and after that, it's only about 10 bucks a month. So whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or just join a community, Skillshare will keep you learning. Now, on with the video. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another video. And before recording this, I'm actually not sure whether this video is going to be controversial or not. First of all, I know a lot of people really like The Force Unleashed and I would consider myself sort of within that group. I really enjoy the games. I think there's definitely better within the Star Wars universe, but they're certainly fun and I'm happy they exist. But I think overall, there's a lot of issues relating especially to Starkiller as a character and Starkiller's clones in the second game. We'll break down and discuss all of that in today's video, or at least I'll give my perspective. But before we do, I just want to make it clear that notwithstanding all the issues we'll talk about today relating to Starkiller and the plot of the Force Unleashed games themselves, I am glad they exist. I've often said that Star Wars video games especially should treat fun and gameplay first and treat plot and interconnectivity second. I advocate putting gameplay and whatever's fun ahead of what makes sense within the universe. So from that perspective, the Force Unleashed 1 and 2 are great games. Now, there's definitely issues with maybe repetitiveness and length, especially in the second one, but we can talk about that on a different day. Today, I want to focus on plot. And we'll start with The Force Unleashed 1, because each of these games kind of annoys me from a plot perspective for different reasons. All right, so the basic idea in the first game is that Vader has a secret apprentice known as Starkiller, who he recruited as a very young child after slaughtering Wookiees and others on Kashyyyk. Starkiller serves as a covert agent for Vader as well as a sort of apprentice and is sent out to unite the enemies of the Empire so that they can all be taken out at once with the promise that Vader will also, with Starkiller's help, take down his master. Now a lot of the plot in the Force Unleashed isn't bad per se. I really like some ties into the expanded universe as well, including the actual appearance of Garambel Iblis, which is just awesome. But Starkiller himself is just too powerful of a character. I think he doesn't fit well within the existing tone and framework of the universe, and he's sort of got that issue where they try to do too much with a new character in an already established time period. So Vader taking on a secret apprentice is a cool idea, and Starkiller is almost like Vader's version of an Emperor's Hand. The relationship between the two characters is interesting and somewhat complex, although it comes down to Vader in the end betraying Starkiller multiple times, and the relationship with Coda is even more complex and interesting interesting, with Starkiller at times working basically as a double agent. When it comes to overall force powers, my main issue isn't that Starkiller is powerful and exceptionally powerful, I mean it is a video game, it's the fact that he's another exceptionally powerful force user in an era where it seems like a new Jedi, Dark Jedi, or Sith Lord is being discovered basically every day. Again, it's not the flashiness of the power or the fact that he pulls down a Star Destroyer for instance that's annoying, I don't like that his power feels un earned, I guess. He's sort of always this force demigod. He takes on Sidious and Vader, and it just doesn't feel like there's any reason for him to be this powerful, whether it's training or destiny or whatever else. He just seems powerful for the sake of being so. I do understand that he has this history of being trained under Darth Vader, but personally, I don't find that very compelling. This would be less of an issue, I think, if the time period were different. This is all taking place during the Galactic Civil War, during the early days of the
the rebellion. I think there being a bunch of really powerful force sensitives running around during this point sort of takes away from what's going on in A New Hope. And I think that's extra true if we look contextually at the Star Wars EU at that point, especially stuff like the early Bantam era books where we learn about new Jedi and hiding all the time. And I guess my point is from a plot and tone perspective, I think Starkiller is inserted fairly brusquely into the existing lore. The Force Unleashed also has the issue of trying to make the story it's telling too important within the overall framework of what's going on. So we see that Starkiller, a character unknown up to this point, not only helps form the Rebel Alliance, but his family sigil becomes literally the symbol of the Alliance. He personally faces down Emperor Palpatine, and whether Palpatine was letting up or not, he actually defeats Palpatine in battle, although I think it probably was just a trick. And he also changes fundamentally how the Alliance was formed. I'm not sure if I like the idea of the Alliance coming together largely through an Imperial ploy, but weakens what we get in other material and stronger material, including the Revenge of the Sith novelization, for example, and just basically everything else about the Alliance's early days. And I also don't like the fact that people like Garmbel Iblis and Bail Organa were actually brought directly in front of Palpatine. I think that changes the nature of sort of the early alliance before the outbreak of open fighting with like the Battle of Yavin and whatever else. So my issues with Starkiller isn't simply that he takes down a Star Destroyer in the Force Unleashed, which is a cool but difficult part of the game. It more has to do with how his character and how his arc is sort of forced into an existing framework and I think changes everything around it for the worst. Now, again, this is a video game, so I'm still happy the Force Unleashed went with this story because if you're limiting the game to stuff that works perfectly within existing lore then I think you're gonna most of the time have a pretty boring game but I do think this is one of the weaknesses of trying to insist that everything is canon now this video isn't meant as a shot against the force unleashed and in fact it's the opposite this is an example of why the force unleashed is a fun game despite Starkiller being sort of a weird character because Legends was a bit looser when it came to video games and how well they fit into the established lore. Canon has been more strict and I think at times certain games like Star Wars Battlefront 2 have suffered for that and this is something I've talked about many times on this channel and on my second one. The problem with The Force Unleashed 2 is pretty similar. I mean we get a lot of what I talked about for The Force Unleashed 1 but we also have the major sort of point that Starkiller in this game is a clone. Killing Starkiller off in The Force Unleashed 1 is actually a pretty interesting and bold choice. It means if you make a sequel you've got to play with what the plot's done in the first game without, you know, the same major character. Of course, with, with Galen being cloned, it's like, ha, huh, I got you, we're still gonna use the same character, but we're just gonna make his death essentially meaningless. As a rule, I also hate Force-sensitive clones, whether they're gonna go insane or become good or whatever else. I think the Force should be incompatible with cloning, in my opinion. Even the Thrawn trilogy, based on what I would do, got this one wrong. It also had the caveat that that clones went insane if they were powerful in the force. As the end of the last command shows that still has the potential for insane power creep with, you know, armies of force sensitives, whether they're mad or not. This is especially true when the clone is very, very functional, like we get with the Starkiller clone in this game, or in new canon, like we've gotten with Snow or Palpatine's son, the Strandcast, or whatever else, which is extra lame. And then of course, Starkiller at the end of the Force Unleashed 2, or the Starkiller clone, manages to defeat Darth Vader and takes him hostage or prisoner. And that's a through line that in five years the rest of the EU never really touched, which I think is fairly telling. But that's okay, it's a video game. I like that it told an interesting story, even if it is wackier. I mean, if we're gonna keep every piece of Star Wars material in line with with the movies, we are going to miss out on a lot of fun and a lot of excitement. And that's what I think of with The Force Unleashed and The Force Unleashed 2. Did those games change everything? No. Do I consider them a part of my personal headcanon for the Star Wars Expanded Universe? No. And I don't really think about them a whole lot, besides for when I'm playing them. Part of that is because Starkiller is a dumb character, but it's still better than not having the games exist at all. Anyway guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you got through all of it before just liking or disliking based on the title alone. Until next time though guys have a good one be safe and may the force be with you